In this video, we're actually going to work on displaying a Google map in, in the form of a map view. So um, this, there's a couple types of ways, a couple ways you can do this. A map view is one of them, but we're going to get more into the details later in this video. Uh, just before we start, though, I want to make sure that you have the correct branch checked out. If you're following along with my code on GitHub, make sure to get the branch that says displaying a Google map start. That's the branch you're going to want to be with on uh, for this video. So let's uh, let's start with looking at the documentation because that's always kind of the best place to start in general. Sometimes it doesn't give you the best information or uh, isn't the easiest to follow, but it's usually the best place to start. So here I am in the documentation on the Android SDK section, and I have map objects selected down here. So the creating a map section, and I have map objects. So maps are represented in the API by a Google Map and a Map and Map Fragment classes. So uh, there's a couple code samples. The Google code samples are actually really good, so I always recommend checking those out. You can go to their GitHub page uh, at the API demos repository, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to kind of follow down here. So uh, this is the one to add a map fragment. Um, just going to keep scrolling down. So here is the map object. So here's the different types of map objects that we can use. Uh, and you can see that on the side here, it says the map object, and there's two different types you can use either a map fragment or a map view. So let's uh, scroll down and take a look at the differences here. So map fragment is a subclass of the Android fragment class. So basically what you need, the takeaway here is that it's, it is a fragment, it's not a view. Whereas the map view is a subclass of the Android view class. So that's gonna allow us to put the map in an, in an Android view. So this is gonna be ideal for what we wanna do because if you take a look at the completed version of the app, which I'll open right here in a second. Remember, this is what the finished version of the app looks like. We have a map that kind of occupies half the view, and then if we click this button, it extends to occupy the whole view. So using a map view here is just gonna be better because it's more, uh, it's just more suited for what we're trying to do. We want it to occupy half of the view, and if we want, then occupy the entire view. So that's why we're using a map view. So now I'm going to, um, you can see here it talks a little bit about how to implement a map view. I'm just gonna click this sample here and we're gonna take a look at that. So this is gonna be the most basic form possible of a map view. You have an activity, uh, it implements the on map ready callback. We have a map view object up here. Uh, and then the rest of this is all that's required to um, use the map view. So the thing that's different about the map view that really stands out is that you're required to use all of the activity lifecycle override methods. You're required to use on resume, on start, on stop, on wrap, well that's from the implementation, uh, on pause, on destroy, and on low memory. And you can see that the map view uh, must be, must be uh, called in each one of these override methods. With a map fragment, that's not necessary. It's not, sorry, it's not mandatory. Um, and then there's the rest of this setup here. So basically we're gonna be kind of I'm gonna be kind of copying this general structure and then I'm going to adapt it to suit our needs for our project. The biggest difference between what we're gonna do and what's being done in this example right here is this uses, uses an activity and we're going to be using a fragment. So we're actually gonna be putting the map view inside of a fragment. All right, so let's get started. Um, once again, I've created a gist to um, save you time. So I'm just going to paste it in here. Um, so if you need, you're gonna to wanna to get this code, it's just gonna save you a lot of time rather than watch me type all this out. So go to this URL right here, and um, the first thing we need to do is actually alter the fragments uh, the fragments layout file to include a map view. So uh, you can see right here that I've included the map view into this layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this whole thing, and then I'm gonna go back to Android Studio, and we're gonna open the resource file named fragment user list. And if you go to the text tab, you can see there's nothing really in here right now. So now I'm gonna paste in our new layout. And now we have, you can see we have a, uh, I'll just kind of go through it, I guess. So we have a linear layout with a weight sum of 100. The recycle view occupies 50% of the weight sum. So in other words, 50% of the layout, you can see it highlighted over here. Then we have a relative layout that occupies the bottom 50%. And inside of that is our map view. So there's our map view right here. The ID is user list map. Now we're going to uh, copy the contents of the example that we looked at into fragment user list. So we're gonna go into the UI package. I'm gonna open up, or sorry, user list fragment, gonna open up that. Now we're gonna copy the contents of that example. So I'm gonna go back to our Google sample and I'm just gonna basically copy everything. Uh, actually, as opposed to this, first copy this map view bundle key. That's gonna go into a different file. That's actually gonna go into 
the constants file. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. So just, just copy it in for now. Uh, so now let's see what's next. So we need a map view object. So I'm going to copy that. Go back to Android Studio. I'm going to put that under the widgets heading because it's it's not really a widget, but it's it's a it's a UI component, I guess. So I'm going to put it in there. Uh, let's see what we got next. Next, we're going to copy all this code for on create and go back to Android Studio. Paste that into on create. Uh, you can see we get a couple issues here. So we're using it in a fragment, so you can't use find view by ID like that. So I'm going to put this up here. You actually have to write view dot find view by ID and our map is the user list map. So I'm just going to change that. Um, this map view bundle key is what we just actually put into the constants file. And yeah, so that actually should be picking that up, but not sure why that's not. Is there an import issue? No. Nope. Uh, so anyway, so next we'll implement the, that'll, that should import after I get rid of this error. So um, and this is giving me an error because I haven't implemented the uh, on map ready callback interface. So I'm going to do that. So implements on map ready callback. And we need to implement the required override methods, which is on map ready. I'll just click OK. And you can see that that error goes away. I'm still not sure why this map view bundle key isn't, isn't coming up. Maybe if I rebuild the project. Oh, it's private. That's why. <laughs> Change that to public. There we go. Uh, so now that should be importable. There we go. Okay. So now what's next? Let's see here. We need this uh, saved instance state method. I'm just going to copy all these actually because we're going to need every single one of those. I'm copying the rest of the file. Let's go back to Android Studio. I'm going to paste it over top of the on map ready method because on map ready is right here. I'm also going to change all these protected calls to public. They don't need to be protected. And I'm going to get rid of this marker. Um, I guess I could leave it actually just to show a marker. So I'll do those imports. Okay, so there's the basic general structure of what you need to use a map view. And I'm actually just going to clean this up just just a little bit, I'm going to make a private method. So private private void init uh, Google map, and we're going to take a bundle as an input, saved instance state, we'll call it. And I'm going to move all this stuff into there just to kind of clean up our code a little bit. Now I'm going to call this here. So init Google map, we're going to pass the saved instance state. And there we go. So now we should be good to go, we should get a map showing up in our fragment class. So at this point, I'm going to run it and uh, take a look. Alright, so I'm going to enter the chat room. Now I'm going to open up the uh, user user list fragment by clicking on the user list. And then we have our Google map. So and you can also see that the marker is being planted uh, that we that we did in the uh, on map ready method right here. So that's that's that uh, that marker right there. Whoops. So at this point, everything is working as me as we expect. Uh, one other thing I could just show you really quick, I guess, is to how to display your own location. So I can go map set my location enabled and set that to true. I could run this app again. And uh, now there's going to be a, a little d blue dot showing my location on the Google map. So once again, I'll join the chat room, go to the fragment. And there's our map. And if I scroll over, over to Canada. Uh, oh, it's not showing it because uh, this error right here. So whenever you do something like this to a Google map, you need to explicitly uh, perform the permission check. And this needs to be changed to get activity. This can be deleted. Uh, so if I run that, still showing an error though, where are we getting that? All right, there get get activity. Too much going on here. There we go. Okay. So we try that again. Third time is going to be the charm. Join the chat room, go to the fragment, and there's our marker. And if I scroll over to Canada, way over here in British Columbia, there's me near Vancouver. Uh, so, so you can see that our map is working, GPS is working, uh, all that kind of general stuff is working. Uh, the next, the next steps are going to be the more more complicated stuff. So, the next thing we're going to work on is actually retrieving the device location, and then after that. We, uh, so that, that's going to mean not just putting a marker on the map like it's doing right now, but uh, that means getting the actual coordinates and getting the information about the device location, where it is, what city it's in, uh, kind of all that information. Soon after that, we're going to be uploading those coordinates to the database. So I'll see you in that next video.